Hi everybody, Gene here. Just before we jump into today's show, I just wanted to share something with you that's kind of exciting. Every single spring, my friend John D. Whitus puts on an event called the Spring Energy Event. It's a two-day energy medicine event that shares lots of really amazing modalities for folks who are practitioners and folks that are just trying to continue to do some personal development and growth along the way. For the last seven years, we've hosted the event just outside of New York City. Because of all that is going on in the world, we're actually moving the event virtual this year, so you can participate no matter where you are in the world. If you go to springenergyevent.com slash 2020, that's springenergyevent.com slash 2020, you'll find out the information about this year's event and how you can register and how you can join us virtually. If you are hearing this after the 2020 event, I'd really encourage you to go to springenergyevent.com so that you can get a recording of past presentations as well as information on how we are moving forward in the future. So if we do another virtual event, you'll be able to join us. Springenergyevent.com slash 2020. This is Gene Montrose telling welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 446 for April 8th, 2020. Hi everyone, I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time of day you're getting a chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Today we're going to talk about and tap about something that has become really important for me and taking action and even more so because of what's going on in the world and that's how to move from the state of emergency to the state of urgency and we'll break those two terms down in just a moment so you can see what that means and how that becomes useful for you in your tapping and your transformation so you can take better action every single day. Before we do that, I would just like to thank all of the supporters of the Tapping Q&A podcast. The reason that we're able to produce these podcasts every single week with the quality that we do is because of those supporters. If you would like to be a supporter, all you need to do is go to tappingqna.com slash support. Not only can you ensure that this podcast continues, but you also receive a number of really amazing bonuses. And I would like to thank Michelle. Michelle is the most recent supporter. She actually started supporting a number of weeks ago, but because of the craziness of the last few weeks and the publication schedule, creating those COVID resources, we didn't get a chance to thank her by name. So I really appreciate Michelle, your support. If you would like to be like Michelle and be a supporter of the podcast, all you need to do is go to tappingqna.com slash support. The idea of moving from emergency to urgency came from a number of conversations that I've had with clients over the course of the last number of months. And what they were concerned about is they recognize that by being afraid of a particular outcome, it was in their mind as they thought was keeping them on guard. And if we tapped and eliminated the fear, then they would become lazy. Then they would stop taking action because the push of the fear of things going wrong was going to keep them moving forward. And fear is a useful motivator in some circumstances. It's a useful motivator in the short term. The longer that you were trying to make transformation over or the more actions that you need to take to be successful, the less useful fear becomes. And not only is fear a poor motivator for anything beyond the moment, there are four things that can happen when we are in a state of fear. I'm sure you've heard of fight or flight. Really, there are actually four F's that we can experience. We can experience fight, flight, freeze, or fog of the mind. And so fight, you know, that when we're in fear, we start thrashing about either with the actions that we're taking or physically fighting. Flight, we're in a circumstance where we try and escape where we just ignore what is going on. We put our head down. We don't do anything at all. Freeze. If you've ever driven down a country road and there is a deer or antelope in front of you, oftentimes what the animal does is it stands perfectly still. It freezes. Now, in a circumstance where it is dealing with a creature who is trying to catch them at night by the coloring of their fur, They're going to blend in and freezing makes them safe because the creature that's trying to catch them is going to be looking for the movement. The problem is when they're standing in the middle of the road, they don't blend in and we are not chasing them. We're just going for them and that can cause lots of problem for your vehicle and for the animal in the middle of the road. But we do the exact same thing. When things are fearful, we just lock up. And in some cases, it can look very, very similar to flight. 
But with flight, we ignore something. With freeze, we know it's there, but we don't take any action. The last F, fog of the mind, is the one that is least common. But it does happen, and the reason why we experience fog, much like fight, flight, or freeze, is to keep us safe. And the way that the fog is keeping us safe is by having a foggy brain about something. I can't focus on it, therefore I don't feel the emotion of fear. And so you can see, if you are trying to do something, if you are trying to take action, if you're trying to be successful, being in a state of fight, flight, freeze, or fog... It's going to make it really difficult for you to move forward. And if you move forward, it's going to be able difficult to move forward in a way that is thoughtful, that is gentle, that allows you to have true, real transformation as you are doing that. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, there can be a fear that if we get rid of our fear, then we're going to be in a circumstance where we're not going to take any action at all, that that feeling of fear is the motivating factor. And so that's when I realized it's not as much about just eliminating the fear, but what is the resource state that we want to be in after we've eliminated the fear? And for me, particularly if it's something that is on the deadline or something that is really important to me in my business or in my life, having a sense of urgency is a really useful emotional state to be in. Because when I feel a sense of urgency, the first thing it does is it focuses me. It's urgent. It needs to be done in a quick fashion. So therefore, I am blocking out the other things and I'm staying focused on what is important. The second thing that I have found with urgency is urgency gives me a little boost of energy. Oftentimes we talk about that kind of positive nervous energy we have before we step on stage to give a presentation or before we're going out on a date that's very exciting. Like there is some jitters there, but it's kind of the good kind of jitters. And so when we are feeling and experiencing a state of urgency, what that does is it makes sure that we stay focused, we don't become casual, but we are not experiencing the negative repercussions of the fear. We're not in the fight, the flight, the freeze, or the fog. Instead, we have focus and we have some energy which allows us to take action in really specific ways. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now is we're just going to take a few moments and we're going to move ourselves from that state of fear into the state of urgency. So we're moving from emergency into urgency. So I want you to think about an action that you want to take that you've been avoiding, because more than likely, if you've been avoiding it, it's because you are afraid. You're afraid of the outcome. You're afraid of putting yourself out there. You're afraid of taking a risk. You're afraid how others are going to see you. There's lots of fears. And in this particular case, the tapping that we're going to do today, we don't actually have to tune into the specifics of the fear, but I want you to think of that particular action. So tap on the side of the hand, take a nice big deep breath. And just move from tapping point to tapping point, repeating after me. I recognize the fact that fear is trying to help me. The fear that I am feeling is helping me to identify danger. The fear that I am feeling is trying to point out pitfalls. The fear that I am feeling is trying to keep me safe. I appreciate the fact that my system wants me to be safe. I appreciate the fact that it doesn't want me to be in danger. But in this particular instance, the fear is overfunctioning. It is working way too hard. It is making it difficult for me to act. The fear is causing fight flight, freeze, or fog inside of me.
experiencing any of those makes it difficult for me to take action. There's also a part of me that is worried that if I let go of the fear, that I am going to become casual. That I am going to become reckless. That I am going to become thoughtless. It is worried that the only reason I am taking action is because of the fear that I'm feeling. In this situation, feeling urgency is better than feeling fear. Feeling a sense of urgency will keep me focused. Feeling a sense of urgency will keep me safe. Feeling a sense of urgency will keep me on task. I give myself permission to move from fear to urgency. Because when I feel urgency, I am able to take action without being stuck by the fear. I'm glad the fear is trying to keep me safe. But by keeping me stuck in fight, flight, freeze, or fog... It is holding me back, which is preventing me from being safe. It is much easier for me to take action from a sense of urgency and it's much safer to me to move from urgency because I take better action. I'm glad I want to be safe. Working from urgency is the easiest way for me to be safe. Nice big deep breath. From a 40,000 foot view, you'll notice inside of that tapping, in addition for tapping for the issue that we had at hand, you can see the way that I am continually acknowledging the experience that I'm having and not saying feeling fear is the wrong thing. I'm saying that it is an unhelpful thing because there are times in which fear is very, very helpful. So I clearly state what is unhelpful about my current state. I appreciate the fact that it's trying to do what it's supposed to do. And then I'm stating what I would like to experience instead. And so you can use this pattern for anything that you want to tap on. Tap on the thing that you're stuck in, tap on your appreciation for that thing that you're stuck in, and then tap on what is the emotion or resource that you'd like to feel instead. And as you do that, you're going to find yourself moving from one resource state to another. And I'd be willing to bet as you did this, more aspects and more ideas came up as you were tapping along. And so I hope you jotted those down and you can now go after those specific thoughts, feelings, emotions, memories that came up as we tapped through that. So this provides twofold when it gives us the ability to release some of the fear and move to a better resource state and two gives us feedback about what we're experiencing which allows us to execute and act in the way that we want from a higher more effective resource state and you'll notice i didn't say a better resource state i said a more useful or effective resource state because that's what we're trying to do our emotions are not good or bad they're either showing up proportionally and well informed or disproportionately and misinformed and so the goal is just to move to a state where we're having the emotional state that provides the resources for us to do the things that we want. 
I would love to hear your thoughts on this. If you have any questions, I can always be reached. Gene, G-E-N-E at tappingqa.com. If you know someone in your life who could use a resource like this, please pass it along. Don't spam your inbox and send it to every single person in the world. But if you know someone who could use a resource like this, it would mean the world to me if you passed it along. And the most common way people find a new resource is from the recommendation of a friend because you have a relationship with them. They trust you. They're more likely to check it out. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the podcast in podcasting parlance. Subscribe is always free. You can get the podcast in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Deezer, Radio.com. Basically, anywhere that you find audio online, you can find this particular podcast. Sometimes they say subscribe. Sometimes they say follow. Click the button next to it wherever you're listening to the audio You can always go to tappingpodcast.com and find our entire archive, which is over 450 episodes deep. Questions, comments, topic recommendations, guests you'd like me to interview, drop me a note, gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqna.com. I always love hearing from listeners just like you. For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montristelli. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Monteristelli Tapping Q&A. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Monteristelli and Tapping Q&A.